Welcome to Blazor Component Events. I'm Ed Charbonneau, Senior Developer Advocate at Progress and Microsoft MVP. Over the next few minutes, we'll be learning about component events. We'll learn how to add a select event to a component using the event callback delegate. Through this process, we'll get an understanding of how components are rendered and why the event callback is different than other .NET delegates. For the demo, we'll continue with the weather component, which was created in our previous video, Component Basics. Let's start by understanding the component rendering and event lifecycle. In a typical JavaScript or jQuery application, developers are responsible for directly modifying the user interface by creating, modifying, and destroying elements. This is called direct DOM manipulation, and it is costly in terms of application performance. Blazor takes a more performant approach by using a render tree, which is a lightweight copy of the browser's DOM. All changes are reconciled in the render tree before applying the final changes to the browser. The fine details of the render tree aren't important. However, we do need to understand that our components are responsible for letting the render tree know when a UI change has happened. When a component needs to be re-rendered, the component's state has changed method is called. And in some cases, we need to call state has changed manually. When an event is triggered, we use the event callback method, which internally calls state has changed on the component, its parent, and its siblings. Now let's apply what we learned about event callbacks to our weather component. We'll start with the weather forecast data item that we're using as a model to bind data to our component. We'll add a selected property to the weather forecast item and preset the value to false. Now let's open the forecast component and modify it to accept a selected parameter. Next, we'll need to set a value for our CSS so when the component is selected, it changes its style. We'll write out the selected CSS value in the forecast item's class attribute. Now we need to create an event. We'll call the event unselected and we'll set up a parameter with the type of event callback. We'll also pass the day of the week as an argument so we can figure out which component raised the event. And finally, we'll need to allow users to click on the component to raise an event. We'll do this by adding an onClick event handler to the outermost div of the component. We'll call this event handler handle on selected. Now we need to wire up handle on selected to invoke our on selected event and pass in the day of the week. We'll use the invoke async method. This is a special method on the event callback that only triggers if a delegate is assigned. To satisfy the event argument, we'll pass in the day of the week for this component's instance. Now we can make use of our on selected event from our weather forecast page. To add the selected functionality, we first need to set the selected value of the forecast item. We'll do this using the selected property. Next, we need to attach an event delegate to the on selected event. We'll call this event delegate on forecast selected. We'll need to write a method to satisfy the on forecast selected event. We'll accept the argument of day of the week and we'll use the day of the week to set the selected item. To do this, we'll use a simple for each loop. We'll set the selected value equal to the day of the week that matches the forecast item argument. On the weather forecast page, we can now click any item from the list and see the selected item that was chosen. In this video, we saw that event callback was the proper type of delegate to use. Let's take a quick look at what would happen if we used an action instead of event callback. Let's replace our event callback with an action delegate. We'll also change the invoke call to match our action delegate. We'll place a breakpoint on on handle selected and rerun the application. When we click on an item from our weather forecast display, we reach our breakpoint. However, when we return to our running application, no items are selected. This is because the component's state has changed method hasn't been called, notifying the Blazor framework to update the UI. All parent and sibling components would also need their state has changed methods called to update the UI successfully. This is why in Blazor, we should always use the event callback delegate versus standard.NET events and actions. 
In this video, we learned about component rendering and event callback delegates in Blazor. In the next video, we'll learn about two-way data binding with components 